Welcome everybody. Let's get started with this problem. So we have a rotor ride at a carnival and people are getting pressed up against a wall or a wall room and they give us the radius how far that wall is from the center of this circular ride and they also give us the rotation frequency. So we have a bunch of data here and the most important thing is we know that there's uniform circular motion, right? Something is going around in circles. So let's start with our diagram. And the radius of that thing going around in circle is 4.6 meters. So that's our first piece of useful information. With that in mind, we also know that the rotation frequency, right? So what does that tell us? Frequency of rotation tells us how quickly something goes along. It's, so it's pretty much like telling us the speed at that point. So let's, let's work with this. Uh, that's one of the clues. So rotation frequency, let's see. The frequency is 0 0.50 revolutions per second. Okay, so what does that even mean, right? Um, well, what's, what's one revolution mean to us? One revolution to us or anything means you go around in a circle one time. What does going around in a circle mean? That means traveling a distance of two pi r, right? So we know what r is, they told us just now, radius is 4.6. So that means 0 0.50 revolutions per second, and one revolution since in any, any one revolution means two pi r, one circle around, sorry, one, yeah, one circle around the perimeter of a circle, so it's two pi, and in this case, this circle happens to be 4.6 meters. So that's, that's that, and revolution, the units of revolution cancel out, and we are left with the revolution, and two and 0.5, that's just one. So something like 4.6 times pi meters, Per second. That's what we end up with. And I guess if we care to solve that, that pi is something like three. Uh, so something close to 14.45 meters per second, or we started with 0 0.50, so two significant figures. So we'll just bring it down to 14 meters per second. So that's that's useful. We started with this piece of information, and what we realize is what they're telling us is the velocity is 14 meters per second and the radius is 4.6 meters. And you know, that's useful information when working in anything that's uniform circular motion, right? Uh, next, they're saying people are not slipping down, you know, they're pressed up against the wall. So what's, what's going on, right? It's, it's, uh, what is the friction? How hard are they pressed up against this wall that they don't just fall down? Because once the ride starts, the bottom falls out to take it away and people don't fall down. So the friction must be enough to hold them in place. So let's think about that. Now we're talking about a free body diagram. So here's somebody spinning. Here's, here's the wall. They're on this side of the wall and they're pressed up real tight and they're spinning and they're not falling down. There's, there's no bottom, but they're not falling down. If this makes any sense. So let's draw the free body diagram at this point. Um, there's I'm not gonna overlay it because it'll get pretty messy. There's gonna be the force of gravity pulling that person down, uh, pulling those people down. And there's going to be the force of friction, right? They're pressed up, their shirt, their clothes, their skin is pressed up against a wall, which is probably some kind of a soft mat. And that provides a friction that's, you know, keeping them from sliding down and, and they're experiencing an acceleration towards you know, the center of the circle. They're experiencing an acceleration towards the center of circle. Also, um, another way to put it is there's a normal force. This, this so-called back of the wall is pushing, the surface is pushing up against the person. So this would constitute our free body diagram. And you know, if we look at some of all forces in the X direction, well, there's really only one force, so I'll put that at positive. And by the way, the acceleration is going in the same direction as the normal force. So there's only one force, normal force, which is equal to mass times acceleration. And uh, I'll substitute for acceleration the fact that it's a radial acceleration. Acceleration is not zero here. This is 
this is a circular motion. In circular motion, there is change of direction. So there's always an acceleration towards the center. And so it's mass times radial acceleration. It's a non-zero acceleration. So we know what of f of n is. Now, for the y, sum of y forces, we have the force of friction, which is going up. I'll call that plus. Force of gravity, which is negative. So force of friction plus force of gravity is equal to mass times you know, acceleration. And we're neither going up nor down. And that's, that's not radial motion either. So this is going towards zero. So these, these forces I feel are fairly well balanced. So force of friction minus force of gravity is actually zero. And force of friction, the formula is mu, you know, the coefficient of friction. We're not moving, right? Coefficient, there's coefficient of connected friction, there's coefficient of static friction. We use static friction when something's not moving. So we're not rubbing up on the mat and moving, we're, we're staying there. So whatever the coefficient of static friction is times the normal force, that would be the formula we substitute for force of friction. Equals zero, let's move things around, force of static, you know, coefficient of static friction times normal force is equal to force of gravity. We move force of gravity around. Um, let's expand on this a little. We know what f of n is, we found out here. So we'll just write it's mass times acceleration uh, towards the center of the circle, A of r. And force of gravity is just mass times acceleration due to gravity, which is g. Mass is present on both sides, that goes away. So static friction, static coefficient times A of r equals gravity. A of r, well, we know that's v squared over r. So if we substitute that. And you know, let's keep the ball rolling. Let's get static friction on one side, move the r to the other side, v squared to the other side. Um, if you're not following the math, I divided both sides by v square r, v square, and I multiplied both sides by r. In the equation, if you do the same things to both sides, they're still equal. And you know, we know gravity is 10 meters per second or 9.8 meters per second square, sorry, meters per second square. Uh, and radius they told us was 4.6 meters roughly. I, yes, I am skipping the units, that's bad. Um, the 0.5 revolutions per second we translated to 14 meters per second, so that's for V. So if we do that, we should find the coefficient of static friction. And you plug that in and you'll get something like 0 0.23, and there's no units, and let me show you why there are no units. Okay? Um, this this was meters per second square, right? Times and this was uh, meters, right? And we're on top of the speed which is squared. So what should happen? Meters meters times meters becomes uh, meters square or second square divided by this this thing square gets meter square per second square. So cancels out. So there are no units. The coefficient of static friction is just a number. And yeah, that's, that's the thing, that's it for part A. They asked for what's the minimum coefficient of static friction so people won't start slipping and falling down and then everybody will not sue everybody and there'll be a lot of grief and pain. Anyway, so for maximum happiness at a fair, please provide the static coefficient of friction of 0 0.23. Next part, is there really an outward force pressing people against the wall? If so, what is the source? If not, what is the proper description of the situation? So, you know, this is subjective. And I would say that the inertial path, which means their tendency of something traveling in a circle, it always wants to go this way, but then there's slight changes in its direction and it ends up being forced into a circle. So this tendency to go off on a tangent is called inertial, inertial, inertia, meaning resistance to motion, inertial path. I don't want to change my motion. I would like to go straight every time, but somebody keeps pulling me back to the center. So it's the inertial path, and then the change in, um, change in the direction causes us to get this feeling of being pressed down. So it's not that there's a force, uh, pinning us down, I think that's what they're asking, um, outward force pressing them against the wall, right? You know, so if this is the wall, is, and the person is here, is there an outward force 
pressing the question. No, the person has been swung around, right? I mean, person was here. They were swung around and they want to go this way, but then, um, you know, there's something changing the, you know, the wall, changing their direction. No, no, go this way. No, go this way. No, go this way. So it's, it's these two things combined. The fact that we want to go, a body in motion stays in motion, linear motion, and then the fact that our direction is changed on us, that makes us feel like we're pinned to the wall, but there's no real force pinned to the wall. Rather, it's the interaction of the two forces that gives us that feeling that we're pinned to the wall. Again, this is subjective. If you find a better answer there, let me know. Thanks for watching.